Hey guys, after more than a month, or just over a month, we're back at the farm for the next episode of The Great Farm Cleanup. Hey, it's Chris from The Ultimate Recycler. Welcome along if you're new here. If you wanna go back and check out the playlist, make a cuppa, buy a slab of beer, whatever, it's a long story and it isn't finished yet. So my mum and dad were here for 61 years on this property. I grew up here as a kid. We've sold the farm. We lost dad last year and mum has moved to Nagambi. So there's no one living here now. We have to continue the clean up. The neighbours, Ross and Linnell, have bought the property and they're being very gracious in allowing us plenty of time to clean up. So today, uh, it's Monday afternoon. I'll be here till Thursday morning. I've got a lot to do. Let me show you some of the things. First of all, we have an unfortunate news with the old wagon. The people that wanted it had something like a four hour drive to get here and they're, um, they run a business and they've had some staffing issues with their business and they've actually pulled out of the deal. I don't know if that was an excuse or not, but anyway, I've relisted that for sale. Hopefully we can find someone more local that wants it. So at this stage, it's gonna stay in the farmyard. I have to contact the guy to come and clean up the rest of the pipe. So um, some, a local farmer wanted that, which is fine. I'm gonna hook the ute up to the trailer shortly and the local transfer station's open tomorrow morning. So we'll try and get rid of a load of, of scrap metal, just low value stuff like these freezer bodies. And I haven't really done much in this shed as far as cleaning up, there's a lot of old tins and a few old lawnmower catches and drums and things. Things that are no real value um, we'll get rid of. The drums are still full of wheat, so I think someone in town might take those. Um, but anyway, I'll load the trailer up with just with light, messy steel. And there are three other fridges in another shed. Over here, they're actually handy storage as far as their mouse proof, which is convenient on the farm. but. They've finished their usefulness, so they can go on the trailer if I can get them on. They're going to be pretty heavy. There's some old timber doors and things that I'll round up uh, and take over to the bonfire. We'll get rid of all that. Now, the caravan, we were going to take to Mum's place, but there's been a change of plans for that, and we'll probably sell it where it is. So we probably won't get to that this trip, but uh, at some stage we will. And just down the lane here, we have the old um, 1960s Chamberlain tractor. Now, my son's going to keep this one but I do have to start it. It hasn't been started for a long time. It was on saw bench duties and uh, it, we haven't cut wood here for quite a long time and we certainly don't need to cut any more. So I'll try and get that started if I can and we'll take that back into the farmyard. The saw bench itself, well, my son Steve also may want that. So I'll check with him. If he doesn't want it, I'll be selling that. Uh, the wood pile there, well, Ross moved some of it into the sheds for us, which is nice because we still need the fire going when we come back here. We're in the depths of winter at the moment and it's only 11 degrees. Pretty chilly start, so I'll have to light the shed fire as well. Uh, the rest of this timber around here, well, I think we're just going to put it into a big pile and have a bonfire. Uh, a lot of it's just old stuff that's been eaten by white ants or it's got a lot of nails in it, so it's really no firewood value. So we're cleaning up pretty well. There's certainly a lot more empty space out here than there was when we started. The old plough way down in the distance, I'm not sure you can see that. I have featured that in other videos and um, a friend of mine wants that. So hopefully that'll be picked up at some stage. Uh, and I think that little frame can just go down to the scrap metal pile, the machinery graveyard, which for those that haven't been following the series is further down the lane there past that old international header. And I will be getting a few more things off that, off the old machines down there before they do go for scrap. And we woke to a fairly chilly morning. It wasn't a frost and then it was foggy for a while, but now the sun's up and it's actually quite a nice day. I've continued to clean out this shed next to the caravan and we have all these old fridges and a couple of freezer bodies to go to the transfer station. So I've just tied that down and we're about to head out there shortly. Uh, I've had a couple of people here already. Um, the binder over there in the shed now officially belongs to someone else. So that's good. That's been paid for and that will be picked up at some stage, he's going to tee it up with Ross probably or when I'm home next, so that's all good. And he will be scrounging a few old binder parts that are scattered around the workshop and the other sheds, uh, which is great because I'm happy for them to go to someone that will use them rather than just scrap metal. And mum's nice rock display cabinet will be going today, and I know that for sure because the guy's already dropped his trailer off and he will be back after doing some business in a nearby town. And friends of ours are actually on their way today to pick up this kitchen cabinet, which has already been paid for. So that's definitely going as well. 
Still haven't heard from the wardrobe lady, but I think she's coming or organising someone to pick these up this week sometime. So if that goes ahead well, that's fantastic, and we will have a lot more space in this shed that we need to start sorting out all the stuff in the middle. And right on time, the guy turned up to pick up the uh, large display cabinet that had all the rocks in it, and there it goes off to its new home, where I believe he's going to be putting a huge collection of little matchbox cars in, so it'd be ideal for that. And here's the space in the shed. So that's fantastic. I can now sweep up and work my way a little bit further along that wall. Got to get those cabinets out from the back. I think they're mostly empty. So we should start to make some pretty good, pretty good progress in here uh, this week. And I have heard from the wardrobe people, they'll be here bright and early in the morning. So we better get the shed fire cranked up early, melt the ice of everything and start moving wardrobes. That's great. We're going to have big space in here. I've been cutting up a bit of wood around the place to keep the workshop fire going. It's pumping out some nice heat now. It's getting later in the day and I will be out here this evening working on the contents of the workshop, which is sort of an ongoing um, saga, I guess you'd call it. So I wanted to keep the fire going. Uh, I've just got the utility vehicle going over here. The CF Moto, um, I think it's a UTV. And uh, it hasn't been run for a while, and of course the battery was flat, just as the battery in the ute was flat, so I've had to jump start things again, because remember, it's been about five weeks since I've been here, and I'm the only one that drives these things. Uh, I also had to give this old girl a, a drink, because I think Dad was probably the last one to put fuel in it, and uh, it's just been gathering cobwebs in the shed, except for when I'm here, or, um, or Steve, my son, puts around in it a bit too, so... Anyway, we're right to go. It uh, shouldn't run out of fuel now. I've just been gathering some old plywood and stuff out of the sheds. I've lit the bonfire around the other side of the farmhouse, so we're just burning some old messy timber, um, and the steel will probably go back to... I'll probably take that stuff to the scrapyard one day. It'll sit in the shed until I've got a, a load for the van. Uh, so I've got to clean up this feed shed. I've got rid of these freezer bodies, as you can see. There's a fair bit of scrap metal just stacked here. I'll certainly pull out the heavy stuff and the aluminium and anything of value. And I think there's some brass water fittings in there as well. The rest of it can go on the next trailer load to the local transfer station, along with a lot of these old tins that mum used to use for feeding the animals. There's an old lawnmower catch there. I don't think that's got any value. The green feed bin will sell okay. I'll take that back to the shop. Uh, around the walls, we have numerous things hanging up. They're actually not a, assemblies from the old binder or parts thereof, so they can probably go with the binder. I did say to the guy that bought it that I'll round up any parts that I saw for him. Another old lawnmower catcher in there, some general buckets and just general stuff to sort out. That box can probably go on the bonfire. The old machinery belts, well, I got rid of a heap of those one other time, but uh, they'll go next time I do a load of general rubbish. The bicycle frames, they're not really old enough to be of much value. They're pretty rusty, so they'll probably go in the next scrap metal pile as well. So there's not a lot in here, really, when you look at it. I'm just pulling out any old timber to go around to the bonfire right now. I don't know where that giveaway sign come from. I'm sure I didn't take it off a pole beside a road somewhere. More belts. Um, so there's not much in here. There's another old bicycle. Don't think that's good enough to sell. We might check it out, though. Uh, the frames there are the battens from the old binder, so they'll be going with the binder. These old um, sieves will sell. I'll take them back to the shop. So they're okay. Uh, is there wheat in here? I think there was. Yeah, it's full of feed wheat for the chooks, so we'll have to find someone to take that, unless Ross actually wants it. Uh, and in the, in the old cow shed in here and in the shearing shed, there's a bit of stuff to sort out as well. I've been in here a few times with you guys. Uh, not a great deal. Excuse the sunlight coming through the, the window there. Well, actually, it's not a window. It's just the edge of the shed. Uh, a couple of old lawnmowers. I might take them back home one day when I have uh, a bit more space in the van and we might do a little project to see if we can get them running. Some more tyres I have to get rid of. There's some more tyres over there. Uh, some just general bric-a-brac in here. So not a great deal to clean up. There is an old door over against the side here. I don't think it's worth saving. I think it's only a plywood one. So I might take that round to the bonfire as well. Any nice doors I would certainly take back to sell. But, you know, it's difficult to sell them unless there's something special going for them. And that one's just ply panels. So probably firewood. I better throw that on the trailer now. 
in the shearing shed. Well, I've been cleaning up a bit in here this morning and uh, there are some panels and things to go to the bonfire as well. Uh, there's an old workbench there, which isn't good enough to take back to the shop. There's an army box underneath, so I can certainly sell that. I pulled out a bit of scrap metal in the middle here. There's a bit of rubbish in front of me. Look at the dust coming through the sunlight. Uh, there's a Triton workbench frame there, and I've get, got the actual uh, Triton saw bench at my place, so I'll probably take that frame back. There's a drop saw over there as well. I think that worked okay, but part of the frame was broken. Those panels on the wall will probably take around to the bonfire, a couple of old door frames again. So yeah, and the old roller mill, I do have to actually send some pictures to the guy. That just reminds me, I better take some photos now. And these are the old canvases off the binder as well. So we'll offer those to the guy that's bought the binder and that saves me having to deal with them. Hopefully he can make some use of those. Well, there's a cute little chaff cutter up here that we'll take that back to the shop. That's certainly a saleable piece. Finger cutter if you're not careful. Well, I've been around all the sheds and rummaged in all the corners and pulled out so many doors. I didn't know Dad was a door collector. I mean, yeah, his name was Jim, but I don't think there's any connection to the Morrison family. Lots of doors. Unfortunately, there's nothing there worth keeping. I might try and save the hinge off the top of that one. But uh, they're all either rotten at the base or they're, yeah, they're just too far gone and it's pretty hard to sell doors unless they're kind of, you know, really nice ones or in excellent condition. How's this? The end of this shed's beautifully clean now. Super organized, good access to the caravan. I think I backed it in here and I'm actually impressed how close I got without actually hitting anything. So yeah, sometimes I even impress myself. All right, let's go around and put these on the bonfire. Um, lots of plywood too, and old mace night, particularly around the walls of the shearing shed over there. So yeah, I've, I'm happy that I've um, dragged out all the old stuff that's of no value as far as burnables. And while we've got the fire going, and while of course it's in the middle of winter, great time to get rid of it. Okay, the last pile is just about gone. I'm not normally a fan of burning stuff. I think it's a, a cheat's way out of getting rid of things. But when it's only light stuff and it's plywood, there's no real firewood value. And, uh, you know, there's nothing here that's really that saleable. And given that I have to clean the place up, it's the easiest way. This area, of course, will be littered with nails, but uh, at least it's all in one spot. And I think Ross can probably scoop up the top few layers of soil and... Uh, take it all away in his loader and leave a nice clean spot. Just finished unloading and it looks like the fire likes it so that should clean that light up pretty quickly. I'll come out in the morning and rake up whatever's left into that little pile in the middle and probably find a few more bits to add to it but yeah it's good get rid of all that make the sheds uh, a lot more manageable as far as they look more empty that's got to be good. So on that note, I'll sign off, and if I can reference another Jim, Jimmy Barnes, although I think he stood in front of a burning cane field from memory and was the song Working Class Man. You Aussies will know that. Probably overseas, you'll be saying, who's Jimmy Barnes? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next episode. Um, I'll probably try and film one again tomorrow, but we do have to go into town, well, into the next major town to do some business. But I want to get some more stuff done, and we have to, of course, load the van. So we'll catch you then. Bye for now.